Hi everyone, welcome to Crossroads. And uh, thank you so much for joining us again, like every month, to talk about intelligence and what parts of sciences help us answer questions about its mechanisms and mathematics. Um, this talk series is run by Cross Labs, a research institute here in uh, Kyoto and Tokyo as well, aimed at understanding the mind uh, through computational research. We explore ideas about brain science, information science, AI and artificial life, and how they can enable uh, new technologies and positive changes in society. Um, the cross and crossroads means we bridge across many disciplines of mind and intelligence, and we're supported by Cross Compass, uh, a leading AI company in Japan, working in technologies such as manufacturing, uh, gaming, other industries as well. And this is our monthly fun forum uh, on the sciences of mind and intelligence. Um, as usual, this event will be in three parts, a talk first by our guest speaker here on YouTube, and this will be followed by a short Q&A. And finally, we'll invite everyone uh, to continue with the chat on Zoom, off stream. And today, uh, I've got the immense pleasure to introduce our speaker of the day, Hiro Izuka. Uh, hi, Hiro. Hello. Uh, Hiro is uh, an associate professor at the, the Autonomous Systems Engineering Lab, um, Faculty of Information Science Techn Technology at Hokkaido University here in Japan. Uh, but also, we are together part of CHAIN, um, also at Hokkaido, uh, a new center studying uh, philosophy, AI, and neuroscience together, um, very similarly to Cross Labs. And we are currently building uh, many exchanges uh, between our institutions. So. Um, uh, Hiro uh, works on artificial life, uh, cognitive modeling, uh, especially with techniques from complex systems and lately uh, neural deep learning and adversarial learning. Um, and he'll be presenting today a very exciting latest work uh, just published in scientific reports um, called Super, uh, Superposition Mechanism uh, as Neural Basis for Understanding Others which I literally can't wait to hear more about. So uh, I can't believe I, I talked for so long. So now, Hiro, let's uh, dive in. And uh, yeah, whenever you like, the screen is yours. OK, thank you so much, Orath. Um, I'm Hiro Izuka from Hokkaido University, Japan. As uh, Olaf introduced, uh, I'm belonging to, also belonging to the Center for Human Nature, AI, and Neuroscience Center. And we, Hokkaido University opened that new center in 2019. And then the center is called CHAIN in short. And it, uh, it's an interdisciplinary group from humanity, science, biology, information science, brain science, and engineering to study consciousness, mind, social science, brain, uh, with recent technology of artificial intelligence. And then um, what we represent with CHAIN is that we want to connect the people from different professional fields to study the difficult problem, uh, such as consciousness or mind, ethics, that kind of things. And we also have uh, open seminars about once in a month, about once in a month. Uh, so for those who are interested in that kind of topic, please visit our webpage and check it out. And become a part of our uh, strongly connected chain, like this, right? Once you become a member, you cannot escape like this. But don't hesitate to join to work together. OK, and uh, today uh, I'd like to talk about the study recently published in uh, Scientific Reports, as Olaf introduced. Uh, this work is actually the result of, the results of interdisciplinary research. Uh, for example, Wataru is from uh, AI, and me is from uh, artificial life and the math. Masahito from the game AI and optimization, and Shigeru is from the phenomenology. And we had a long discussion about the boundary between the self and others. So when we think about the, what life is, the discussion of uh, boundary is unavoidable. And now the deep learning is, becomes very powerful, but at the same time, the realization of biological or natural intelligence is a big problem. So uh, at that point, uh, we are from uh, no, three of them from our uh, engineering side. And then Shigeru is from the, the, the uh, philosophy side. 
And the Shigeru provide the strong opinion or ideas from the phenomenology uh, about the boundaries. And then we, uh, then we are connected by chain. And then we discuss from the various point of view. And then finally, we publish this paper. And today, I'd like to talk about uh, this uh, talk, uh, study, uh, work. And then I will give a talk here today on behalf of them. But if you have difficult and strong philosophical questions or opinion, please feel free to ask Shigeru. And she, she, uh, he's very happy to answer. And I'm, I'm also trying to answer the, 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 the question. OK, let me start. And then it might be sudden, but the, first of all, let me briefly introduce our previous study. The reason why I introduce here first is that the understanding this work will help you uh, better understand what I'm going to talk about today. So please be patient a little bit. And then, uh, by, as you know, in the neuroscience, it's very famous. And it's known that the, there exist neurons that fire in response to the physical location, which are called the, the play cell or glit cell. Uh, they are different, but uh, the, uh, that's not so important. And then uh, to explain uh, how it works, how those the neurons work, there are so many uh, mathematical models uh, proposed and then that retain the spatial representation. But those of them, the, ah, no, sorry. Uh, but uh, those, those works use the, the uh, pre, uh, pre given knowledge of a, a kind of space, but they think about the lots or infants. They have never been told where they are from the third person perspective, but they still they have a map, right? It's, so there is no model where spatial representation is built from only visual uh, motor experiences. So we try to create the uh, the kind of simulation models. Then we take the simulation-based synthetic approach using the deep neural networks. And then uh, this, the model is very simple, but this is the a kind of environment, two-dimensional environment. And then this one is can be a rat, is a robot, They're moving around on the uh, two-dimensional space. And then there are four landmarks on the wall. And then we just create a model, a very simple model. Uh, this model receives the visual inputs. And then as an output, uh, the model predicts the future uh, visual inputs like this. And then the model has the encoder first. Uh, no, uh, sorry. The model receives the visual inputs and also the uh, motion inputs, like a pro proprioception. And then the visual inputs are encoded to the, the visual feature vectors. And then this one is the recurrent neural network. And then the, this module just receives the visual information and the motor information, and then create the feature vector, and the decoder create the visual image like this. So if you don't understand anything, uh, if you don't understand uh, well, then don't worry. Just that this is a neural network. The receive the visual inputs and the predict the future visual inputs like this. And then those uh, this neural network model is trained to predict the future visual inputs, right? Those that those parameters are trained to uh, predict the future visual images properly. Then this is a result. The results of the prediction. Um, it's, uh, the situation is like this: but without visual information from the proprioception, uh, the the neural network module try to predict the the the, the future. Uh, visual images. And then this is the actual the prediction results. So it looks uh, very good uh, performance for the prediction. And then at that time, I just visualize and we visualize the internal state of this one, this internal state. And then uh, each internal state are plotted with the points on the, this the ICS space. And the color of points show the position of the agent uh, in the physical space. So if the robot is close to the red landmarks, the internal state is plotted with the red color. And then we just plotted the internal states while uh, the agent moving around. And then we created this kind of, uh, we can see that this kind of the, the states, uh, internal states. And then, uh, as you can see, the two-dimensional internal states are self-organized, uh, which is the same dimension of the environment. So uh, 
th those internal states are uh, sorry uh, the maintain uh, in correspondence with the physical location. So this is kind of, kind of uh, we call it the, the placer in the we can call this a uh, placer, right? And actually, we applied the model to the real world environment like this. That's still just the mod what the model is doing is just a prediction from the visual inputs and then just try to pr uh, predict the future visual images, even in the physical uh, real world environment. And then this is a result of the visualization of internal states like this. And then still, I can, I know we can see the, the, the self organized two dimensional uh, internal states, uh, which is close to the, the place cell. So, what I want to say here is that the prediction, a uh, predictive learning encodes the outside environment into the internal state of the neural network, which corresponds to the outside of the physical location. So this is the, our first finding of the, our neural network model. Okay, uh, this is just the introduction. <laughs> okay, and then uh, please keep this work in mind. And I would like to start today's topic. And then today I'd like to talk about this, the self other differentiation. Uh, through the predictive learning, okay? Um, the first, I just want to explain that the, uh, there are roughly three theories to explain how we can predict or explain others' behaviors, right, roughly. One is the theory theory, and the simulation, second one is simulation theory, and third one is interaction theory. And then uh, theory theory, use the implicit general knowledge called folk psychology. And folk psychology just assumed that the people have the various theoretical entities, like, like a desire or a belief. And they're using those entities, they build up the explanation or the, the prediction of others. So we can say that the, the uh, theory theory used that knowledge-based inference. And then second one, in the simulation theory, people try to figure out how other people will think or act by using the, their own cognitive mechanism to simulate their mental states. So first, uh, the people build up the simulation model from their own sensory model experiences, interactions. And then you, uh, use those models, uh, use their own resource to comprehend others' intentions. So like a, uh, the people just the put uh, put uh, put themselves into others' shoes, and then uh, just simulate what uh, they will feel or uh, recognize. So this is the simulation theory. And then a critical position again against these two uh, ideas is the interaction theory, and it is uh, the interaction theory criticize the view of uh, unilateral observation of others and making inference about others' mental states. Uh, but rather the ongoing interaction itself uh, causes the direct perception of others, right? Th this is the kind of uh, the, the brief introduction of the how people, uh, there are three theories and how we, uh, we predict and explain others' behaviors. And then I just want to say that it is important to say that what I explained here is just a typical example of those ideas. And there will be a, so many variants uh, or different ideas based on the, these ideas. So uh, if you want to know more, then just uh, please read a uh, lot of papers, right? And then I don't want to go into the debates between the uh, theory theory and the interaction theory or the interactions, interaction theory, uh, but I just this is the illustration of those approaches. So. For the theory theory or uh, simulation theory, there is a self here, and then there is a uh, others here. And then this entity used the folk psychology or simulation model to understand the others. And then try to understand what happens here by using the, the own resources. And the interaction theory is a bit different, but the, the interaction itself just creates self and other. But they just prepared the, the, uh, the for the theory. They prepare the self and others in advance. This uh, the framework kind of. So the question is that the how can the pre-existing pre frameworks of self and others be formed? Right? They just assume that those kind of frameworks exist in advance. But the 
what we think is that the more like a uh, this kind of illustration. So the well, we are questioning the pre-existing concept or framework of self and others in Adobe. So we assume that, that there are no uh, pre-existing frameworks of self and others. And this concept uh, must be acquired through learning like this. And then we need to, we need to, starting, uh, we need to start from a situation where uh, there is neither self nor other. But uh, they, they're, uh, at the beginning, there is no clear difference, but uh, try to, uh, the, through learning, the concept of self and others are separated and then create the self and other. So that is our idea, right? So we try to build this kind of model, right? Okay, and then uh, just, I want to explain uh, more about the idea, our idea, right? So that the people just uh, usually uh, receive the sensation from outside. But those sensations are nothing more than the external stimuli, even if they are considered the belonging to a particular body from the third person perspective. So this is just the sensations. But uh, we don't know uh, why we get the, that kind of sensations. And then uh, at the initial stage, the self is not clearly distinguished from other. So we don't know uh, the self and other. So we have to attribute this kind of sensation to the, the self or other. We have to decide. We have to determine. But it, even before the, the having the concept of self and other, we have to first we need to create the self, uh, self the concept of the self and others. We need to, that. and then we want we want to investigate uh, what mechanisms make it possible to learn or obtain the representation of self and other, and how those concepts are connected to the social cognitions. So we want to create that kind of model, okay? Uh, and then we just propose this kind of model. So uh, the, the, the important thing is that we assume there is no clear distinction between the self and other. So uh, as I explained from, the outside, we receive the sensation, but we don't know uh, what what those sensations are at the beginning. So we just uh, process those sensations in a single unit. We call it the, the anyone model, right? Now, because there is no clear distinction between the self and the other. So we just have a single module and then this module just calculate the 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 the, the this uh, no process the, the sensations, right? But the, if the uh, the sensation is only one and the model is only one, there is if the uh, the uh, flow of calc cal calculation is a single pass, then the model just creates can create the single interpretation of sensation, right? But the we just create that uh, the the model can distinguish the self and the other, so we just create the multiple paths like this. So the sensation go into the this one and this one and this one as well. But the, there's no uh, uh, agency. I mean, I mean the the self and the other. So this information is processed by processed by the own uh, the shared module like this. And then we call this uh, the superposition uh, module. Right? The, the, this is the concept model of our approach. And uh, the, this is just an example of the, 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 the different approach, right? From the sense, uh, the, this is a sensation. And then if the, there is a clear uh, separation between the self and other, so, uh, the sensation go into the, the, the self module and uh, the different time the sensation goes to the other modules. But this is the, in this case, they just assume that, that there is a clear difference between the self and the other. But the, for, our, for our model, there is no clear distinction between the self and the other. So we just prepared the one single module to process the information. But there is that uh, multiple paths 
to make it possible to interpret the, the multiple ways. Okay, so this is what we call the anyone model. And the important thing is that the, we just got the email a few weeks ago from the the, the Professor Gordon. Uh, he, he's an originator of a simulation theory. And he, he also working on the agent neutral coding. I think the I, I just read the, the paper and I think the idea is very close to our our model. So agent neutral means that the kind of the anyone model. There is no safe other distinction between them. So this is our concept model. Okay. And then we just uh, create the deep neural network to realize this concept model. And then this is the illustration of uh, our uh, proposing model. It's very complicated, but uh, I just explain one by one. So the, the neural network model receives the visual information and also the, the, the motor, info, motor information. And then visual information, uh, uh, the, the calculation path is the multiple. Is that in this case, there is two uh, information flow. One is red one, the another one is the blue one. So uh, the visual information go into the encoder, and then this encoder converts the visual information to the feature vector. And then this is a one uh, process. And then the feature vector is processed by the superposition module. This is realized by the LSTM, is a recurrent neural network. And then this output the feature vector. And then this module is a kind of the prediction module, just create the prediction of the future visual images. And the, uh, in the case of the blue path, the visual information is processed by the different encoder. And then future vector is processed by the same module and then output the feature vector using the, this blue input and the output, the blue output. And then this module is integrate red information and blue information and the output that single visual uh, future, uh, future uh, prediction of visual images, right? Okay. And the important thing is that the, the super module, superposition module is shared between the red calculation process and also the blue calculation process. Okay. I just uh, and the, maybe this is the, the the complicated. So I created the another illustration of this model. This one is the might be easier to understand. Again, visual information is go into the encoder, and then uh, converted to the feature vector of layer one. And then this superposition module received the feature vector of the uh, this one and also receive the motion information and then calculate something and then output the feature vectors, right? And then for this part, visual information go into the different encoder and then they create the, the feature vectors. And then this module, actually this module is a completely same as this one. And then receive the feature vector from the visual input and also the the, from the motion, and then uh, output the, the feature vector here, blue one. And then this module integrates those information. The important thing is that this is the completely same model. So the dimension of this feature vector is same as this one. And then this module sometimes receive the uh, red one, and sometimes receive the blue information. And then it's like an input is a interchangeable between here and here. Right? Sometimes uh, receive the red one and sometimes receive the blue one. So interchangeable. Okay? And then those modules have an internal state, but the internal states are separated. But the module, the parameter is the shared between this one and this one. I hope you understand, but uh, Olaf, do you understand? Yeah, I'll have questions later, but uh, yeah, I think uh, I, I think it's pretty, it, it's uh, generally clear. Okay, okay, okay. 
Okay, uh, let me go to the next. And then uh, the this model is implemented in the single agent. And the single agent just receives the visual information like this. And then visual inf and then uh, this net what this network has to do is the the prediction of the future visual images. That is a task of this neural network model. And then loss function is just uh, the difference between the uh, the actual visual information and the prediction. So just the, those network is trying to create the prediction, uh, good prediction of the visual inputs. Okay. And then we just created the simple uh, simulation environment like this. And then in the previous case, the agent is just only one. But in this case, I have to see the social interaction between the two agents. So we just, uh, in the simulation environment, there are two agents, agent one and agent two exist in this environment. And the agent one just moves around in this arena. And then agent two does not move. Okay, and the agent one is e equipped with the superposition neural network, the, the, the previous model. Okay, this one has a superposition neural network. And then receiving the visual images and the motor inputs. Now, this is an example of visual images. So, in this, in his view, the red one, red agent, in his view, uh, actually the, the, uh, the agent two exists here, like this. Okay, and then what agent one is do uh, what agent one is doing is just a prediction of future visual images again. Okay, and then, uh, each trial the black agent now agent two doesn't move, but they, at the different trial uh, the the agent two is placed into the different position and then he doesn't move at all during the trial and then. Uh, the next trial, uh, the the agent two is placed to a new place. Okay, and then this is the result of the uh, prediction performance. So actually, this is the ground truth of the, the the visual images, and then this is the result of the prediction. So you can see still uh, another agent exists in the environment. Still, the agent can properly predict the visual images like this, and then this is another example. So black agent, no, agent two just uh, stay close to the uh, green landmark. And then, yeah, you can see the, in his view, the black agent is close to the green one. And then this is a result of the prediction performance. So it's the network basically can predict the visual, future visual images like this, okay? And then we just try to visualize the internal states of the superposition neural network, same as uh, same as uh, the previous model, right? Just visualize these states. Then uh, if the agent one is close to the lead landmarks, I just, uh, that dot, the internal state is colored with the lead dot like this. So the lead agent is close to the, the green one and then the internal state is plotted with the green color, okay? And then, uh, we also visualize in the, this internal state as well. And then this one, for this plot, we just, the, the coloring is the based on the agent to the position. So in this case, the agent two is close to the yellow landmarks. So that inter, this internal state is plotted with the yellow color like this, okay? Then uh, this is the another example. And then we just, uh, uh, there are so many simulations, trials like this and like this. And in the end, we just, uh, those states are overwritten in the one graph. Then I can see that the, this internal state is activated uh, while corresponding to the physical location of agent one. And then uh, from this figure, I can see that this internal state uh, is activated while corresponding to the agent two positions, right? So uh, the internal state of the superposition modules are activated in response to the agent one and agent two positions like this. 
So this is the kind of the own place, right? But it, this one is the similar to the social place found in the neuroscience. So uh, the social place is that the activated uh, while corresponding to the, the other's positions. So uh, they just uh, clarified that the rats has that, ki that kind of the place as well. Right? This is the inside of the single agent. So even in the single agent, the other internal states, they have a place cell and also the social place cell in our model. Okay. And then we try to see the self and other differentiation in this process. We just calculated the distance uh, or uh, distance between the, those internal states to the air. Uh, I mean, the, how much those internal states express the agent one's position. And the, how much we just calculated how much these internal states uh, express the agent two's positions, right? Then at the beginning, that those internal states are very just uh, uh, random. So there is no clear distinction between the self and the other positions. But the, after learning, uh, so the, 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 during the learning, those internal states try to express the agent one's positions. And then this internal state try to uh, express the agent two's position. And the, the, so gradually they are separated. So this module have a kind of the concept of the self. I mean, the representation of self. And then this one has a kind of the representation of others, right? Okay. And then we try to uh, analyze what agent one sees. Actually, this is the superposition module, right? Then this is the external input. And then uh, this, we found that the, these internal states uh, represent the agent one position. And then we try to uh, see what this module just uh, sees from this uh, input. So try to visualize, uh, in order to visualize this uh, feature vector, we just created a decoder. And then this decoder output the, the kind of the uh, visual images. And then uh, like a old, uh, like a, uh, like a old encoder, uh, this network is trying to re uh, reconstruct the visual images of, of this one. So this module must have uh, some kind of the visual information of agent one. Because this module just create uh, uh, the, the, this module represents the agent one model, right? So try to create the visualize this uh, the feature vector with the, this decoder, and then try to minimize. So the learning is like this. So just the, this model receives the visual inputs, and then de construct the visual images from this feature vectors. And then we apply this decoder to this input and then try to visualize what this module sees from this uh, feature vectors. Okay. Then this is the result of uh, old encoder learning. So this self vision uh, sh shows the visual inputs, the actual visual inputs. And then this is the result of the decoder from this one. I mean, the, the, this decoded the images. So the, the, the autoencoder learning is quite successful, as you can see. And then I just visualize this one from here. And then this one is just the, the actual agent to the vision, visual information. But the agent one have never taken this visual information, but uh, from this feature, uh, the feature vectors, this decoder can uh, reproduce the actual agent to the vision. So we call this the visual prospect taking, right? Agent, again, agent one have never been given these visual images. 
And then this one is the actual, uh, no, sorry. Th this is the actual visual uh, image of agent two and never, never been given to the, this neural network model. But uh, actually this neural network model can recreate, uh, I mean the create the visual image of agent two. So this is uh, considered consider the, the visual perspective taking. And this is the, another example. Uh, this is the, the, the autoencoder results. And this one is the visual. You can see that the, the visual perspective taking is the successfully uh, achieved like this. So just by using the superposition module, the agent can naturally obtain the other's perspective like this. And then we just the same logic, apply the same logic to the motion as well. So this time, agent two is moving around like this. And then, uh, then uh, the agent is moving around. So we just have to create some kind of motion input here. So to create the motion input, we add the motion generator like this here. Motion generator. So the motion generator just gets creates, uh, creates the, 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 the feature vector of motion. And then this motion generator is trained to predict uh, the visual, future visual images. So ju just we use the uh, predictive learning. So receive the visual inputs and the output the prediction. And then this motion generator is just trained with this network, right? Then this is a result. The red, red line shows the, the motion command that creates agent two movement as if agent one were agent two, right? So agent one, so I don't know how to move. I mean, the, we can't understand how Olaf tried to move their body, right? But the, I just, if Olaf laid right hand, then I don't know, uh, I know how to raise my hand, my, my right hand, right? So this one is just uh, the motion command that create agent to Olaf's movement as if I were Olaf. So, and then this blue, blue line shows the, the output of the motion generator. So the, this output is uh, re, uh, reproduce the, the uh, kind of the motion commands to create the, the other's motion behaviors. So this is a kind of the mirror neuron like behaviors. Okay, so this is our, what we, so th this is a kind of the short summary. The, 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 what we found here is that the, uh, if we use the superposition mechanism, the result will be the, we just, uh, the agent can obtain the shared representation like a social place there. And then uh, the, the during learning, the self other differentiation happens. And then starting from the no play given frameworks from uh, of self and other. And then uh, the visual prospect taking and the mirror neuron uh, can be achieved with the uh, usage of uh, superposition mechanisms. So these, these abilities are acquired simply uh, through the uh, predict predictive learning. And that usage of superposition network create the kind of uh, constraint the learning constraint, that consistency must be maintained in the both this calculation. Okay. And then I just I want to uh, explain. I want to say that the the advantage of the uh, predictive learning of sensory inputs is that the the learning is based on the self supervised learning. So so imagine about the infant. Infants just always moving around the, on the floor, right? And then they can just correct the feed, uh, they can receive the, so many, uh, the sensory information uh, from the interaction. And then they just uh, spontaneously just train uh, the prediction learning of the sensory inputs, right? So it means that the, for infants, uh, there are so many, uh, so many uh, learning resources just, uh, just uh, while just moving around. And then learning is just a postulate. So there is no teaching signal. So the, the mother 
don't have to teach. Uh, this one is this, this, this one. We, uh, the infant don't need that one. Just receive the sensory inputs and just a prediction. And then uh, just doing the, the prediction learning, they just spontaneously create the self as a differentiation and also the visual pathway taking and the mirror neuron like behaviors. Uh, they, they just establish that kind of the uh, properties with the predictable, uh, predict, predictive learning. And also the, the nowadays the, the predicting processing is very popular. Uh, try to explain uh, like the predictive coding is very becomes very popular. So our model is very quite uh, uh, familiar, uh, suitable or familiar as the close to the that kind of ideas as well. And then in the end, I just want to explain the the uh, whether the superposition mechanism that exists in our brain. And then actually in the uh, neuroscience evidence, there are so many neuroscience evidences that shows the existence of shared activation for self experiences and empathic experiences. And then RTPJ responsible for self and other distinction and the visual perspective taking. And the actually, in our model, the visual information go into the encoder, two different encoders. That this encoder creates the self information and other information, other information. So kind of the the this module uh, create the self and other distinction, and also the visual perspective taking at the same time. And then even in the social uh, neuroscience field. Uh, whether or how that shared activation contribute to the social cognition is still controversial. But the, the in the neuroscientists, they try to explain how those shared activation is used to explain the social cognition. But in our uh, in our study, we just set that simple superposition mechanism in Andaban, and then the the network just just predict the future sensory inputs. And as a result of learning, the shared activation is developed. And then at the same time, uh, the social cognition, like a visual perspective taking, when you new uh, mirror neuron like behave, uh, activation can be developed. So, and also the at the same time, the uh, yeah, yes, the, the if the superposition mechanism exists in the brain. Uh, the shared activation can be developed and the basic abilities to support the social cognition can be acquired naturally in our model. So that superposition, we believe that the uh, implementation of superposition mechanism will be different, but uh, somehow the similar mechanism exists in our brain. And then that mechanism creates the the the, the shared activation and also the the uh visual perspective taking and also the basics of the social cognition and then after that uh, uh, i think we use that kind of concept to uh to to explain the other's behavior with the simulation theory or theory theory that kind of thing okay okay uh that's it thank you so much i hope you understand <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Hido. This is a uh, yeah, a very impressive results and a very neat model. Um, yeah, there there are a few uh, maybe there are a few principles that that may escape me or 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 some uh, some people in the audience. But I think generally it's very simple and very powerful uh, results. Um, okay, so maybe before before going into the, uh, I think people already are, are asking questions. If you have questions, please ask in the in Slido. I think the the link is in uh, the chat. Um, yeah. So, what do you think of the this superposition principle? So, so you just ended by by uh, saying that something like that may be necessary, right? If I understand well, like something like that uh, may be needed in the brain or in, in living systems to develop a, a concept of the self. Did I understand well? So without something like uh, the mechanism of superposition uh, that you suggest, there cannot be any notion of self and other. 
Well, that's a difficult question, but the, I think the one possibility, I just, we, we showed the one possibility to, to, to how the concept of self or concept of others can be developed. And then, so w without that kind of idea, it's pretty difficult to, for the, it's pretty difficult for the neuroscientists to find that kind of activation, right? Mm -hmm. so, so we just showed the one possibility. And then I think that possibility will be tested in the neuroscience. So, mm -hmm. so, so yeah. if they have a principle, then they know how to check mm -hmm. whether it exists or not. Mm -hmm. But without that kind of idea, I think they just, what they can do is just not just, but the, basically they have to do is they just try to see the neural quality, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Between mm -hmm. the, the phenomenon and the behavior. So we just show right. the one possibility. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting. And do you think uh, this addresses as well? I think you hinted at this in the beginning, and I don't know. I heard something similar to the debate about, uh, you know, the nature of communication and language. Uh, like, like we had a lot of that in the 90s, um, uh, even, even more recently about innateness, I guess, of communications uh, principles. Uh, and uh, I guess uh, um, either... Uh, the emergence uh, of language can be innate or learned, right? Like uh, through through lifetime uh, or adapted. Uh, and do you think do you think do you think it's similar for the sense of self here? Are you suggesting that, uh, or uh, because in 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 my view, uh, from what you said, there is no there is nothing that that imposes a view about innateness or not, right? It's just a fundamental principle about the mechanism needs to be there but it doesn't we don't say how it's being developed uh, is that correct yeah 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 i think it's correct but the i think the discussion between the innateness or na nature or and nature is the always problematic i think and then <laughs> mm. but the, the actually the that somehow the mechanism must be innate and then uh, the 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 from the interaction they 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 can the, the model can i mean the mechanism can develop the concept mm -hmm. of self and others so mm -hmm. the, of course the the both can be a very important but the the mechanism uh, will be required mm, innate maybe yeah yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I, I think that that was a side question anyways. Uh, may, maybe let's go to a few uh, a few questions from the audience. Um, yeah, uh, maybe a first one uh, here I see from Acer is that uh, I think he says uh, the inputs already explicitly um, contain self-related information because self here is the motor input. Uh, how do you think? Ah, uh, so, okay. So, uh, uh, are the so so are those inputs already explicitly contained in the self-related information because the the self itself is in the information of the motor input you give uh, to the network. Yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, it's true. I right? just the I want to show that my presentation right mm -hmm. and switch. I see. Yeah, can you see? Yes. The yeah. the, re uh, the reason why in this module and in this side, uh, uh, the, the 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 self is represented in this side is the because the actually the motor the self motor input go into the this module. Mm -hmm. So so I I agree with the 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 questions. I mean, uh, the, this one gives the self information to this module, and then the, for this side we just put the constant to the the module so uh spontaneously i think this module create the other information so never goes to the self representation never goes to the this side just always go this side uh, because the the module has this information so that's true but i think uh even 
we don't give the clear distinction, the motor distinction. I think the, the, in this situation, there is no asymmetry between the self and the other. I mean, the, uh, usually the, the, the people just isolate from others. I mean, the, I mean, there are a lot of time of alone when no, nobody around there and they're moving around by, by themselves. So basically they have only owned their visual inputs and their own the motor inputs mm -hmm. and they process the modules. And then sometimes the, 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 the other appears in front of you and then spontaneously those the mechanism uh, the works like this. Mm -hmm. And then I think if we consider that kind of situation, we just we can just remove that kind of the asymmetry in the motion the inputs. So it might I think it would be fine. But at the, at the moment it's very important. Mm -hmm. The self self so information you, must be here. Yeah. Yeah. So do you see a, a change in that design that would avoid uh, any any kind of uh, a doubt? Uh, or uh, could make the uh, the architecture clear. Yeah, I think it's possible. Yes, mm -hmm. I mean the, yeah. the, sometimes we think that the, the, this create a, uh, this path can be. No, I mean we can add the path here from here to here from the own visual information. Just create the the motor output of the something. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah. Well, there is a there, uh, sorry yeah uh, no 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 please there, there is a follow up question uh from our friend who who also asks about um whether uh action is necessary to uh let self other representation emerge so uh so is is the uh -huh. action necessary yeah actually it's necessary for for this model and then even in a real world, action is necessary. I think, because the uh, I didn't explain so much, but uh, if we this visual information can be always used, then uh, the internal states is becomes the useless. You know, because the from the current visual information just create the the the, the future it's possible to create the future visual images. Not perfect, but mm -hmm. that is almost possible. So yeah. uh, the, there is no important information here. Just the, becomes the, the internal state becomes the useless. So we just add a setting. Sometimes we just cut off this information. So from the motion, just only from the motion, they have to predict the visual images. That, that mechanism promotes to create the internal mm -hmm. representation of space, like mm -hmm. at the place or social. So, so the action is important to create the, the internal representation of space. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I've been thinking about, about this kind of uh, the model. Um, I wonder, is, is there any way to replace uh, the, yeah, any kind of feedback? Well, uh, basically action, right? Like, uh, if you have only visual inputs um, to, to both sides, uh, is there something else that may create uh, your sense of self uh, other than than yeah you making decisions? Is there something else that can replace it? So, something like uh, even if it's artificial. No, you mean not from the visual. So image. yeah, remove the remove the motion, remove the motion at all. A motion, okay. <laughs> Very motion. radical. So only only give uh, leave the visuals. Uh, is there a way uh, to still notice the self? What what is what is needed? Uh, is is it because I I expect that it might not be necessary that it's um, uh, that it has to be a motor action. Mm. I, I think the motor action is important because mm -hmm. I think it's the I mean the the motion is the egocentric information. But the visual information can be the, mm -hmm. not the egocentric, can be a, not the egocentric. I mean, the, I can't explain, but uh, mm -hmm. the visual input is the global information, but the, the motion input is the local, locally closed in the, the, in the body. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So mm -hmm. if I move raise my right hand here, and also I just I can. But the the, the, the most of command is the completely same, right? This one and then this one. So yeah. that mm -hmm. kind of egocentric information creates the the agent center information, I think. And mm -hmm. the important thing is just the move forward and the move back. And that action creates mm -hmm. the same information, same perceptual information. Mm -hmm. So I can just, you know, mm -hmm. I think that my, in my intuition, that, that kind of spatial. Yeah, that, that makes yeah, geometrical. Sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense. So, so you're trying to capture the what is causally related to this autonomous embodiment right, of, of this yeah. agent. And yeah, of course, like the first thought is uh, is the action. I, I was wondering if we can exit that, especially for a question I'll have later. But uh, yeah, first, let's get back. Maybe there are other uh, people who ask things. Um, yeah, next, perhaps uh, Mahdi uh, asks, can we see uh, it like this, that uh, self-understanding is absolutely according to the prediction capability of the agent as the self one is the most predictable one. So uh, yeah, uh, I guess, uh, can we view this, uh, this uh, yeah, so understanding of self um, uh, being completely related to uh, the ability of the agent to predict things. So, so uh, um, as, yeah, as yeah, as the yeah, I guess the self one being the most predictable. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think I understand the question. Mm -hmm. But what the I think that's not what you're doing, right? No, no, no. But the, the the basically, I think even to predict myself is the difficult. And then I I mean in our model there is no clear distinction between the self and the other. We just process the information in a symmetrical way. So as I understand myself, I understand the other. So mm -hmm. It's totally symmetrical. And also, as I understand others, I understand myself as well. Mm -hmm. So I think even the, the, the actually maybe should be easier to predict, but the even about myself things, it's quite difficult to predict. Mm -hmm. and that's my opinion. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah. We have another question. Let's see. Yeah, maybe this one uh, to contrast. So, is it possible uh, some kind of biological structure of self and other? already exists uh, in the stage of brain development uh, caused by millions of years uh, of evaluation. I guess that's a quick yes, or, or is there any, any doubt on that? I guess it's back on the uh, DNA uh, perspective. Well, well my, answer, my answer can be the, the mechanism, yes maybe mm -hmm. but at the same time the development is important and also uh, i didn't explain so much but the i think the mental disease there are so many mental disease cases right and then some people fail to obtain the visual perspective and then mm -hmm. i think that kind of thing can be explained with the supervision me mechanism uh, as well mm -hmm. and then so the during the de development i think they uh make a mistake not mistake but uh, they develop the different in a different way i think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah this, this may be a segue to to the question i had uh about well how how life emerged um uh, perhaps we we went through and maybe that's from my own view but uh, we had to go through um i guess multicellular or uh, or multiple at least multiple scales of organizations of many agents uh, and eventually many neurons in this case, right? But uh, but maybe before it was uh, very simple, just networks of uh, many single 
uh, small minimalistic agents uh, who self-organized. And in that sense, um, is there a version of uh, is there a version of this um, in which you could study the frontiers between selves being a multiple? So you can you can have uh, yeah uh, many to many and and test how uh, the, those boundaries of self could at the same time uh, you know like be be several agents working as a group and several agents being another self on top of them being selves of their own does that does that make sense so uh so basically can can you have can you apply this model to uh yeah social mo models with more than one agent in each box mm, i mean it's possible to increase the number of agents in the environment and then we can just add the the, the multiple paths in the model but I think what you said is a bit different. The, uh, yeah. I'm not sure, but the, the I think the, the free energy principle people try to find out the, the where boundary is from, from the prediction errors. And then sometimes the, 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 the unit can predict the outside, just, just, just outside of the, this unit. But the, from the groups of the entities, then they just might have a kind mm -hmm. of the prediction of outside of those groups, and then they mm -hmm. just try to minimize that kind of prediction. Mm. So I think that kind of model right. can be better. But uh, so if if you have something like um, so, sometimes in a group we have a conversation, right? A discussion, and then uh, maybe I discuss with you some ideas, and uh, and in the end we write a paper, and we don't know anymore. Uh, who had which idea? That's why you list all the authors, and it's very very difficult to know who came up because maybe uh, you you started an idea and then I took and it and it looks like I did it, and I will reinterpret things as it's both our ideas. Maybe that's a complicated example, but you can do it for video games uh, or many people controlling one uh, one character or uh, vice versa. Uh, you can have uh, yeah, I guess you can have uh, just just one controlling many. Um, and the causal, I guess this causal network that we talked about before is uh, uh, shifting in time. So that's what I, I'm wondering if you can add this kind of, uh, yeah, this kind of uh, multi-agent causal network uh, in, in this model. What, uh, yeah, what would it, what would it give? I'm, I'm, I'm quite curious. Yeah, it's very interesting. I, I just uh, understand the question and then I think Uh, even in the between you and I, we sh use the similar superposition network. Then, I think there is no. I mean, uh, I don't know. Uh, could you show the my slide? I just want to use the slide again. I don't yeah, let's show the slide. Can you see? Uh, let me see. I think so. Uh... Yeah. Okay. So this is the, the inside of the single person. And then he has a this superposition network like this. And then you also, you might have a superposition network like this, right? Mm -hmm. And then we just, we after we communicate for a long time, we just train these superposition modules. Uh, superposition module is trying to be the similar one. And then mm -hmm. if we, have the similar superposition network, then there is no, I think the distinction between this calculation and this calculation will be less. And then it looks like a, there is no, even in you and I, we are just connected and then we can't see any difference between the self and the other. So just to form the, the, the very big unit, I think it, that kind of model can be mm -hmm. uh, possible, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah 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 it would be it would be interesting to see if if this can shift and here it's yeah since it's um it's already boxed somehow uh mm -hmm. yeah but i i see some yeah i see, I see some ways to, to maybe use it 
Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Uh, <laughs> all right, so that's, that's a personal question I, I, I would have. Uh, maybe we can discuss later. Um, yep. Yeah, I, yeah, let's see. Uh, I think Keske had a, a question about uh, maybe we want to, to go back in, uh, in uh, the supporting uh, theories, right? Uh, so he says, uh, the model looks uh, like it's supporting simulation theory rather than interaction theory. Uh, as the other's perspective is a result of the simulation from your own sensory inputs. So is that, would that be correct? Um, yes, partially. I mean, the, uh, yeah, actually we use, like I, we use the own simulation model to understand the other guys, the behaviors. But the, the, what we wanted to focus on is that the separation of the self and the other concepts. So at the mm -hmm. beginning, they are just, that's their same. But after learning, they are just uh, separated. And then at this state, we might say that the, to understand this, uh, the other's information, we use the, this model, so it can be a simulation. But mm -hmm. the, the important thing is the, 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 at the beginning, they are same. And also uh, we use the same module. So if we train the network uh, with my own experience, so the superposition can, be cha uh, can change. And then that update is affected this uh, uh, calculation as well. But at mm -hmm. the same time, we just share the module. So we just observe the all of the behavior and then that observation might change the, this network. And then this update can affect the, this own experience as well. I think the, the, the smoothly we can explain that kind of behaviors as well. That, mm -hmm. And also, I want to say that the, I think original simulation say might say that oh, uh, it's in the theory of, and uh, it's in the, even in the, Simulation theory, we, we can explain the same thing, but. Uh... Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah the, yeah, I guess like so, some elements of this are uh, like Gordon uh, simulation theory, but some are also, um, some are also what, what, yeah, the from, from Alison Gopnik uh, kind of view, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, of this, uh, uh, um, yeah, the theory theory. Um, so I guess I guess you borrow from from a bit a bit a bit of uh, of both. Uh, you mentioned a third one, which I which I can't remember right now actually. Um, oh, I see uh, interaction theory uh, by Sean, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, ultimately this is this is a mix and using. Uh, I guess predictive coding to uh, uh, as a as a model. Is there is there do you think um, a need for uh, for in your model uh, to use to use prediction? I think someone asked something similar, but uh, is there something that you could use instead uh, of prediction? Like I'm I'm thinking uh, also something like looking at your yeah something like post diction or uh, uh, looking at uh, just recognizing patterns maybe. So is, does it have to be, I know that, yeah, uh, all the, uh, uh, what is it, like predictive uh, coding is all the rage, uh, but yeah, is there is there maybe another framework that applies as well? Well, um, I don't know. I have never think about that, but they, I think, Um, post addiction might be pos might be possible, um, but uh, yeah, I think the basically the the result would be same if we they use the, even the either post addiction or prediction, but they just try to use the that predict the past information or future information. Mm -hmm. Still, they try to encode the external world events into the instant, into the, the internal models. Mm -hmm. So 
Mm. I don't. Um, well, I don't know. Oh, shoot, sorry. Mm. Yeah, sorry. I, I also. Uh, I'm. I'm. I'm just. I'm just curious. Uh, yeah, I have. Uh, I have no idea either. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We had. We had another follow up from uh, from Acer uh, asking. Um, similarly, the model is basically a forward model of the agent. Um, and is a forward generative model necessary um, to let self other representation emerge? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Actually, training is not just a forward model, but we use the back propagation to 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 update the weights. So, in some point, we use the backward information as well. But the, the after learning, we just use the forward model, mm -hmm. as he said. The I don't know if it's necessary or not, but I think it's quite cool to get the the visual perspective taking also the the self other differentiation from mm -hmm. the forward model. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Usually, people try to use the inverse model, a inverse calculation, to to mm -hmm. estimate the intention of the behaviors. So from the observation, they just calculate backwards to mm -hmm. to find the source of the behaviors. So, but as the, in our model, there is no backwards uh, calculation. So I think it's quite interesting for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I must say, in the process, uh, at first when you presented the architecture, uh, uh, I was wondering, yeah, if you try to visualize what agent the second agent sees, then I was wondering, could it be that the the second agent has a completely different uh, kind of encoding uh, uh, than than the agent one? But actually, of course, you take directly the the uh, the inputs um, uh, before before the they go through uh the the agents uh, network right so uh so that's not the case they they are they are of your creation before so so it's the same it's the same encoding uh, but i was wondering if instead of that you were you were to use um some kind of because surely yeah so so i guess we have similar mechanisms but i guess my question is if we consider different embodiments uh, of agents that can still empathize, what would be the limits of such empathy between, uh, or you could call that, uh, 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 yeah, uh, mirror mechanisms, uh, like mirror neurons or something similar, uh, or um, uh, uh, yes, yeah, simulation of the other, or is it, so is that, is that limited? Uh, can you have a theory of mind Beyond embodiment, easily. I guess, yeah. When when you look at you know like uh, the 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 five signals, uh, uh, I guess they can look very different. Well, and and I guess also the the motion uh, can can look completely different if you have a different you know if you are a bird or if you are uh, if you are. A, uh, maybe an ant or uh, something different. You have very different encoding, possibly. Uh, would that would that possibly affect the model? Okay. Yes. Well, I just uh, mm, that's a difficult question, but uh, I want to explain using my slide again. Okay. Yeah. So, ah, thanks. So I, I didn't explain very well, but uh, this module is the shared between this one and this one, right? This is the same module. And then try to predict the future visual images. This decoder requires the kind of the positional information of agent one and agent two, mm -hmm. the kind of coordinates. If they can have a coordinate of agent one and agent two, then the this prediction module can create the visual images because the all information is there, mm -hmm. right? So at that time, so this path must have a 
agent one position information, and this one has must have a agent two position information here, right? And then to create the coordinate output, that kind of output information, they need to receive some visual information and also the motion information. And then this module can properly create the uh, self visual information from self visual information and the self motion input. This module can create the kind of the agent want position information. And then using the same structure, this module just try to get the, some visual information. But this information must be the agent to the visual information. Mm -hmm. Because in this case, it, this is the agent want visual information. And then mm -hmm. to keep the consistency of the model, this must be an agent to the visual information. And then this one must be the agent to the motion information. Then this module just receives the visual information and the position information, and then output the coordinate. So if they have a consistency between this one and this one, they can mm -hmm. properly create the agent one information, yeah. the agent two information, and then properly that predict the future information. And mm -hmm. then if when I observe the bars behavior, still I try to understand the bars from my point of view, and then try to create the bars view here. Mm -hmm. And then this is the buzz motion, or interpretation of buzz motion of mine. Mm -hmm. my interpretation, try to create my interpretation of bars, and then somehow try to create the, some kind of the bars information, output the bars information. And then mm -hmm. using that, integrate those information, I just predict some, uh, some information, right? Right. So mm -hmm. to keep the consistency, mm -hmm. if we share some kind of embodiment or some kind of behavior, I think we can understand partially mm -hmm. and then create the information. Yeah. So any so, kind of regularity can be captured. So you can yeah, yeah exactly. the neutral information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So somehow yeah. it's possible. And then of course it's completely different than I can't imagine to I can understand the internal mm -hmm. state of that one. But if we share the some kind of the embodiment or the behaviors, then it's, it must be possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fascinating. I, I, yeah, I really like this. I, I have to read the paper uh, uh, carefully. Uh, so I will link that also uh, down below the video on YouTube. Um, I remember you, you presented uh, a different version of uh, of this before, trying to uh, uh, having uh, those models to view your own color. Uh, although you don't see yourself, you would try to infer how uh, what you look like as an agent right um can you remind us about uh, about what what you found out whether uh, and whether that's different from from this study okay well but i, I think it's the uh, can i show you that slide again okay? uh, sure can you see so yeah, yeah okay so in this case this is just a autoencoder so decoded the visual images of the self image, mm -hmm. right? So in this view, the other agent is here. The black box is the other agent. Mm -hmm. And then the prediction, you know, decoded in the decoded images, uh, the, the black box appears here a bit. Mm -hmm. And then this one is the, the decoded oh. image of this process. Right. Yeah. And then yeah. this, this is a kind of the, I don't know, this one is the actual agent to the vision which has never been given to the agent one. And then this is the reconstruction, oh no, I mean the, the decoded images, right? And mm -hmm. then in these images, sometimes it appears the black shadow around here. So this is the kind of agent to view, imagination of agent to mm -hmm. view of agent one, right? So the, in the agent one's view, always the other is the black box. And mm -hmm. then this is the agent two view. And the agent two knows the, the body of agent mm -hmm. one is red, right. but the, the actual agent one doesn't know the which color of the agent one is uh, no, the, themselves. So yeah. 
the, the, the plausible, uh, no, reasonable inference is that the my body has also the black black color. Mm -hmm. Then this is the the myself, right? The mm -hmm. myself in the agent two view. So then mm -hmm. this is the the decorative image, and then this. So in the agent two view, uh, my can appear with the black box. <laughs> and then yeah. sometimes I can see some black shadow here. And then the reason why uh, black shadow appears in the imagination of agent two view is because the body usually the body should be black so in the agent two view the 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 myself up, must appear with the black color mm -hmm. so that is yeah. what i told you before i think Do you mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's uh, really fascinating i think yeah there are many things to explore uh, more with this model um is the uh, yeah maybe the code will be available somewhere uh, and maybe people can fiddle with it yeah yeah I think that the, the, we published paper and also the, the the code as well. So, if you go Good. to the yeah. the site, site, yeah, that's website. Amazing. So we'll link that. It. Yeah, we'll link that as well. Uh, all right. So I think we want to now dive into the third part of the, the event, uh, and we'll invite everyone to join us on Zoom. The link is already in the chat. Uh, you just click there and join. Uh, uh, Hiro, myself, and and whoever wants to uh, to be part of the discussion. And uh, Hiro, so thank you so much again for uh, for giving this talk. Uh, yeah, amazing insights. I think uh, we all learned a lot <laughs> from it. And uh, uh, yeah, we'll see you next time uh, very soon. Yeah, thank you so much.